In today's show, we're gonna build a Power Apps shopping cart. Now you're thinking, Shane, I don't wanna do a shopping cart in Power Apps. That's fair, but we use these for customers all the time for things like looking for and finding assets to send to customers for salespeople, or for going and finding different documentations or images, or different types of scenarios where a person wants to browse through, find a bunch of stuff, and then capture all of it with one press of a button. So that's the concept we're gonna do here. We're also gonna spend a lot of time about talking about building an actual app. We're gonna start completely blank and put the whole thing together. So, should be fun. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys, and today we're gonna to build a Power Apps shopping cart. So this is something I did about three years ago, and it was a super popular video, which was always weird to me. But what was even more interesting though, is I went back and watched it because I got a lot of comments and questions from it. And I watched it and I'm like, whoa, that is definitely three years old. And so what I thought is we would use this opportunity to remake that type of video. We're gonna make it a little bit different, a little bit fancier this time around. But what I thought, saw what was happening there, the reason it was so popular is it's a great chance for us to build a whole app. So we're gonna talk about some data sources. We're gonna have galleries and patching and on change. And so we're gonna go through a lot of concepts. So even if you're not all into shopping carts, right? You're like, hey, that's only for online bookstores. It's not, right? There's a lot of practical purposes here. And even if you don't care about any of those purposes, there's just a lot of really neat lessons learned here. Also in this video, I am finally giving you guys what you've been asking for for a long time, and that is Chewy Merch. Yes, that's right. If you look down below the videos now, there will be a uh, Chewy Merch store, right? Not after making a bunch of profit on it, there's like, no markup on any of this stuff. Just thought it was fun. A lot of people really big fan of Chewy, so we, we threw that in there as well. And so I thought they kind of tied together, so we're gonna launch that today along with this. All right, that's enough blah, blah, blah. Let's switch over to my desktop and take a look at the app. Here's the fancy version of the app I built. As you can see, nice little splash screen. Hello, you know, welcome to this, yay. So then we're gonna say shop. So when you drop in here to shop, you're gonna see that here are all the different items that you can purchase. Very cool. And so I might come in here and say, hey, all right, I want a coffee cup. So I drag the quantity to one. When I drag the quantity to above zero, I'm gonna get the little plus, and it's going to add it to our cart. If you wanna keep shopping or go to cart, I'll keep shopping. I can also add multiples. So maybe we're gonna add two of these. You can see the subtotal is this number times this number, so that's over here. You can also pick sizes, not really important, but we have all that. We add this, we'll keep shopping. I'm over here showing you kind of a preview of your cart. I thought this was a, just a, I don't know, it was another excuse for me to build something else in Power Apps, quite frankly. So we can see it over here. We see our item total. I threw some tax on it, a shipping fee, and then the actual total. And there you go. And so then now we're like, all right, that's cool. A sweatshirt and some uh, coffee cups. We'll say check out. And so then we're over here like, oh, wait a minute. I only want one hoodie. Well, we can just go right here and edit this directly. We're gonna change this to one. And as soon as I leave this field, because we're using on change, boom, $36, it's all updated, awesome, order, video, demo, give me the goods, and then place the order. And so then with the order, what we're gonna do is then we're gonna pipe that over to SharePoint, right? Because this isn't for actually ordering, right? The thing below is for ordering real stuff. But the idea here is that you guys have these needs to give your users a way to look at different assets from a data source. In our case, we're gonna use some SharePoint lists, but you have this need to do that, right? And then you wanna be able to go and save that so that order can get processed, whether it's someone from you know, the stock room delivering it to your house, or if it's um, you know, just digital assets. One of our customers uses it to like send a bunch of, the salespeople go and they're like, oh, this customer's interested in these seven products. They pick those out of the library, they choose the assets they want, and then just packages it off in a nice little email and sends it off to their customers, right? It's a shopping cart, even though it's not really a shopping cart. So, so that's what we're gonna work our way towards here. Um, so to get started, you know, I decided we're not going to cheat at all today. We're going to go through the whole thing. So it won't be as pretty as the one you saw over there, but we're going to go through all the mechanics from the start. And so the first thing we do is go over here to make, and we're gonna say, hey, I wanna build a Canvas app from blank. We're gonna call it the shopping cart and we're going to do a tablet. Okay, so after a few seconds, it drops us in here ready to build our app. And so for this app, I have three data sources. I have already made a SharePoint list called Shopping Cart Items. So you can see I've put some data out here. And just in case you're like, hey, how do I make that exact list, right? I'll go ahead and save myself some time and click on List Settings. And so then there's the columns in the list. So you could pause the video if you wanted to grab that out. 
I also then we're gonna have one for the shopping cart orders. So I'm gonna think of this as like a parent-child relationship. The order, right? Who are you? So like video and demo, what was the total amount of the order? And the comments, that's the parent record. So we're gonna have this in a shopping cart orders. And so that one looks like this. There you go. And then finally, we're going to have a shopping cart ordered items, right? The children. And so the children is going to look like this. There you go. So, so you've got all of that. Now, remember, if you're a subscriber over at training.powerapps911.com, you can download the fully functional app, right? Both the one we're going to build now and the fancy version. And as a new little treat, I went ahead and I built this whole app by using Excel files. So I have an Excel list of all my order, or all my items, my orders, and my order details. And so then to build each of these lists, all I did was went in here and I said um, site contents, and I clicked on new list, and then from Excel, and I was able to choose those Excel files. So another little uh, hookup for you uh, people who subscribe over at training.powerapps911.com, right? So anyway, so those are three lists. So let's go back to our blank app. I gotta put this over here, I'll never find it again. Okay, so the first thing that we needed was this uh, idea that we wanted to show them all the items in our that they could purchase, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna insert a gallery control for that. So insert, and then because of my collapsing, gallery's way over here, so I'm gonna choose gallery and vertical. And so then that's gonna drop in here and we're gonna select the data source. We're going to choose SharePoint. And then we're gonna choose my Power Apps videos. And then we're gonna go down here and we're gonna go ahead and pull in all three at once. Remember, you can always do this, right? One, two, three. So those are three ones. And I like to always kind of give them a, a similar name like that. I do this even with customers. Sometimes it may be just like an acronym or something, but then that way they're grouped together in SharePoint. Cause I'm thinking about SharePoint at this point as a data source, the same way I think of as SQL or Dataverse, not as SharePoint itself. So that's why I would have a naming culture that's a little more conducive to my app building, not my users using it directly. So there you go, we pulled it in, it got the right one. And so then I go over here, oh, not right there. I'm gonna say, hey, I want the uh, layout to be all of them. And then I'm gonna pull it wide. I'm right, we'll kind of stretch this like so. And we're gonna do a little cleanup. So for the sample image, Power Apps did not figure out that in reality it is called this item dot image link. There's our image links. So we've got our baby onesie. Um, I'm gonna flip these two fields and we'll just use the built-in ability. I don't use this enough, I should. So right here, I actually want the price. And then for the body, I want the big old product description. Perfect. For the price, I don't like that it doesn't look like currency, so I'm going to use my text function. So text on that, and we're going to do this pattern like that, All right? And I'm assuming you guys know a lot of this stuff, right? If this is all new to you, then um, I'll put a link to one of the, the intro class that'll kind of walk you through. These are a lot of basic mechanics. I don't want to spend a lot of time because this video's gonna be too long as it is. All right, so then I'm gonna grab these guys. I'm gonna kind of pull this in a little bit. So I'll make it take up about that much room. That one takes up the same, that one takes up the same. Perfect, all right, let's preview that. All right, so that gets us our look at our items, right? And remember, we're trying to build this. So we got this portion done, that was straightforward, but now we wanna add this portion around, um, you know, taking the inputs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hit the X. I'm gonna say, man, I wish you were bigger, let's do this. Still not big enough, but what do you do? Um, and so then now what we want to do is we're going to start inserting pieces in here. So the first thing I had was a label and so for this label, I just use the word, oh, I use the word quantity. And then I did a uh, slider input for no reason. I just like to kind of, you know, throw different things at you guys randomly in these apps. I think it's a better way to learn. And we're gonna set its default to zero. And we're gonna say, hey, the maximum number of items they can buy. I don't wanna buy too much stuff from me at once. Right? I don't want anybody making a run on the store like Playstations or Xboxes. So you can buy up to five, right? And we did that by setting the max. So that's the quantity. And then we also, what do we have over here? We also had the size. And so we're gonna have a label here. We'll pull this over like so. I'm just gonna use the word size right there. And then what we did was we had a, uh, a drop down. So 
text input a drop down. And so then for here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull this over. And I'm going to say, hey, your items. Now, if we look back over at my SharePoint list for a second, all right, remember this is we're going to learn little things along the way. So the different sizes here, I just have these as regular text, but just comma separated. So in Power Apps, what I'm going to do, because, oh, not that one, this one, is I'm going to say, hey, I want you to split, right? Split can take text, for example, this item dot, I forget what the name of the column was already, options. Oh my goodness, my memory is terrible. Uh, sizes, boo, this item dot sizes. And I want to split on the comma. And so just like that, look at that, it spits out a table. Um, and you can highlight this to see that table. All right, well, never mind, power ups being rude. It should show me this is a single column table with one column named value. And if you click on your drop down, expand this back over, you'll see that or the one column is called result. And that's what that is coming out of there, right? That'll be important. That'll confuse some of you like, hey, why can't I do like uh, drop down dot selected dot value? That's because the single column that comes out of split is called result. Okay, so that gives us the ability, and if we kind of preview now, right, we can see, like before, we have all the different sizes. This one only has one size. And you could definitely write some if logic that says, hey, you know, basically disable this drop down if it's only one size. You know, you, there's a lot of clean up -y stuff you could do like that. But that's getting us a lot of what we wanted there, right? We've got kind of this idea. I'm going to pull this a little tighter. Let's make this a little smaller. There we go. All right, I like it. So the next up, is we needed that subtotal. And so for the subtotal, what you're going to do is you're going to add a label. And you're going to, we'll just do something like this. We'll say subtotal. And then we're going to do this item dot price times, right? So just, we'll just like that, times um, the slider, right? So slider one dot value. So then now they're all at zero. And so if we did this right, if I drag this to one, 14.99, look at that, woohoo. So that is showing us, because remember, I like to like see that this stuff works. In reality, you don't have to show them the subtotal or maybe you want to, but really what I was trying to prove to myself was that this was the right formula to get to that end result that I wanted. And that's what I got. All right, so that gets us a subtotal. And so then, you know, and you could also then, if you wanted, you could wrap this in that same text function again, remember? So that would let us, so that it would look like nice money type of stuff. Currency, not money, whatever. Okay, so that has made all of those pieces. So last but not least, I'm gonna grab this little critter here and I'm going to make it, uh, so you can hit the, the piece here. You can actually just change that to be an add icon. Boom. And so if you remember, before what I did, I didn't want to be able to click on add and add zero items. So I'm going to set the display mode here and say, hey, you, your display mode, if slider one dot value is greater than zero, right? So if they've chosen something other than zero, then display mode dot edit. If not, display mode dot disabled. So then that's why I realize it might be hard for you guys to see, but, but these are all kind of grayed out. It, it looks a lot better on my monitor, um, but they're all grayed out right now. But if I change the quantity, it goes up, right? Whoop, whoop. There you go. All right, so that works the way we want. And so then if they click on the little plus, now we want to capture the information. So this we're going to uh, have to kind of grab a bunch of different pieces of information. So, and we're gonna put it in a collection, right? We're not gonna write this straight to the data source. We wanna put it in a collection with a temporary variable to hold it. So to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, I don't know what we're gonna do. We're gonna go over here and we're gonna steal my formula from this one. We're gonna pull something like this over. Let's copy this and we'll probably have to fix it a little bit, but that's all right. It's a lot less typing for me. And that's what no one wants to watch me type. Okay, so what are we gonna do? We're going to, make this thing a little bigger. So we're going to collect, we're going to create a collection called Cole Shopping Cart. We're going to set the title to be this item's title, right? And the title is like coffee cup. Product price would be $9.99 in that case. Product ID, that's its ID from the SharePoint list. And so the idea is if you want to do this um, in a more relational type of scenario, 
then all right, so you might just capture the ID and then go look all this data up, which is a more database correct answer. But the problem with that is then it makes your Power App slower because then you got to go fetch a bunch of data. So I chose to write all the data into my collection at once, but that's a that's an up to you thing. Uh, quantity, sliders value, perfect. Size, drop down selected result, right? So in this case, one size. And then subtotal is slider one value times this price, which we know works to calculate the actual subtotal of this particular set of order. Perfect. So then after that is done, then I did a reset a slider once to set the slider back to its default, which is zero. Reset the drop down. I like that. And then set var success, uh, show success to true, which is going to what's going to cause a pop up. So well, let's do this first before we go any further. So let's add one of these and then two of these. So now that we've added those, one of the things you could do is go here to view collections and you can see, look, it wrote all the data that we expected. And the reason I stop and show you that real quick, because a lot of you have problems like three steps from now. And, but really what it is is your data didn't get in the collection the way you thought. So if you're having problems computing, summing, that type of stuff on your collection, a lot of times what I, I recommend is go check and make sure that what you think is in the collection is in the collection. I'm looking, everything's filled out, I feel good that I collected what I wanted. Okay? So then that gets us all of that. I like it. So now we've got all this in the collection. And so over here, when we added something to the collection, right, if we preview real quick, we said plus, right, we, we did this little pop-up screen, or some people call these modals. So what we're going to do, we're going to build the same type of thing. So to do that, what am I going to do? I'm going to insert a uh, icon, and then all the way to the bottom of these things is the rectangle, which is actually a shape. We're going to pull the shape like that. I'm going to set its fill to be my preferred fill, which is 169, 169, 169. 0.75 that gives it that little grayed out right so what is this saying is use the color gray but make it only 75 percent filled so that it's it's 25 percent transparent so that's when you can kind of see through it gives you that effect okay so then i do that and then what i did was i threw another one of those on here so i'm gonna do another rectangle and i pulled this one I set this one though, uh, it's filled just to be white. And then I threw a label on top of that. Oh, so many pieces. And then this is where I put the success message. Went here. All right, I'm not going to write out all that, but then I formatted that, you know, did all the things to make it look nice. And then I threw a button on here. And so for this one, I'm going to say, um, set var show success to false. And we're going to uh, change the text for this button to just be keep shopping. Okay. So the idea is that when they press this button, it'll just make that go away. And so let's kind of see how, well, I guess let's show that button here real quick. So throw the other button. And so then this one's going to be go to cart, but we haven't set up the cart screen. So it's kind of hard to do. So go to cart. Perfect. Okay, so then now I'm going to take all of these things. So I'm gonna hold down the shift key or the control key and select all of these. Now they're all selected over here on the left. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna say group, and I'm gonna say uh, success message. And then I'm gonna set the visible property for this to be var show success. Okay, so then now if we go in here, if we add three items to the coffee cup, we get the message. If we say keep shopping, all it's going to do is change that variable back to false, which hides this again and puts us right back here. So, so that's how we build that type of a pop-up into our, uh, our app. Okay. Um, so the last thing that we had over here on this screen was I kind of did all this cuteness. And so really what this is going to be is I'm going to take, um, I need some more screen real estate. Get out of my way. So we're going to take this one and kind of collapse it as much as we can. We're going to throw another gallery over here. So gallery right here. And we're going to set its items to be the collection shopping cart. 
And then we're going to change its little cutesy view to be just title, like so. And then we'll kind of slide this over here like that. Boom. Now I'm going to take this uh, arrow, I'm going to change it to be a trash can. And I'm going to say, hey, if you select this, we're going to remove from Cole, from Cole shopping cart this item, right? So that's how we're going to create the little ability to delete these on the fly. We also were showing um, the quantity here. All right. So then we'll just kind of drag this over here because we're trying to maximize real estate really is what I'm doing. So throw another label in here. And then I did something like this, QTY, ambersand, this item, dot, uh, QTY. Perfect. And then we'll pull this up somewhere in here. Don't ever snap this to an exact size if you're doing something like this. You always want to like chop one in half so that way if they get into that limit, they know. If you do this, it's real easy for people to be like, where's my other one? I don't see it. So always set these to kind of half of one like that. Okay. So then now I also had this cute little label to kind of give them their insight of what was going on. And so once again, we're going to we're just copy the whole label. Control C. We'll go over here. We'll paste this in. Look at that. Because I'm using the same names, everything works. Ha ha. Um, but so here you can see that we're using a function called with. I have a whole video on with if you don't know what that is. But the idea is that I wanted to calculate the subtotal once I calculated it here and stored it as sum to us uh, ST, right? And I did that by summing the subtotal column from Cole shopping cart. I also have a video on some, um, I probably won't link to all these videos, but I promise they're all there. Um, so then now I can say item total equals that formula. So take whatever I get in ST subtotal and make it look at currency. And then I did a new line. I hard coded tax some customers. This is optional. Sometimes we look it up, but I just hard coded it to my local tax. Um, shipping, I just hard coded 499. Same type of thing. We give users options. We could, you know, hard code that as well or look it up. I just rolled with it. And then down here, I said the total would be the subtotal, right? Plus subtotal times 0 0.07, the amount of tax, plus the 499. So that's how we got the numbers down here. But so by using with, Instead of having this sum in three different places, right, one, two, three, I did that math one time and then reused it, which in this case, you know, that was very small math. I didn't really gain any giant performance uh, things, but using it in simple scenarios like this gets you more used to using with because a lot of times it can be a huge performance saver if you're doing hard calculations or you're looking up a lot of data. So that's why I wanted to reinforce it here. Perfect. And then last but not least, we'll throw one more button down here. And so what is this button going to say? This button is going to navigate or will we'll, you know, take us to the checkout, but we haven't made that screen yet. So I guess we should do that. So let's do a new screen, blank. We'll pull this back over, tree view. Oh, you go away. And then we'll go down here to screen two. And then we'll set this to be um, checkout. Sure, why not? So then now if we go back over here, we'll set this to say, hey, navigate to checkout. Oh, navigate to checkout, perfect. But then I also only want this, you only want to go to checkout if they've got stuff in the cart. So then I said the display mode for this one is gonna be if is empty, uh, coal shopping cart. So if that collection is empty, there's no items in there, then I want this button disabled. So display mode dot disabled. And if not, I want it display mode dot edit. Just like that. So then that way, right, if they delete everything out of their cart, they can't check out. And you could also hide it. You could just set it to not visible. I don't know. I, I went with display mode. But as soon as we add something back in there, we're good. Oh, there you go, this go to cart, right? This screen, if you want to go straight there, which you could, then we're going to have a navigate here to the checkout as well. Perfect. All right, um, let's go to that screen. We, well, let's, let's add some more stuff to our cart first. We'll do this. All right, we need a couple of things over there just to, all right, you always want a couple of things in your cart or in your collections to make it easier for you to kind of test, right? To see and visualize the data over there. All right, so now we'll go to cart. So now we drop into here. And what we're going to do is we first need a, another gallery. 
And so for this gallery, we're not going to, we're going to show the coal shopping cart, right? The things that they've purchased. Perfect. And if we go back over here and we go to checkout, you can see that I went ahead and spruced all this up. Um, I'm not going to go through, you know, making it look as pretty. We are going to add the functionality, but, but you would just add the different labels um, in there to show the different pieces that you want. Um, so, but what we really want to do here is we're going to add another field. Um, or I guess we do this. We'll change this one to be trash because we already done this before. So what do we do? We remove coal shopping cart, this item. So that'd be how we could delete stuff. Um, in this case, because we didn't store the picture, I am going to end up making this prettier than I wanted to. What you'd have to do is you'd have to do a lookup to um, shopping cart items where ID equals this item dot product ID and then you would say show the image link. So that's how you would do it. But what reason I don't want you to do this or I want you to think hard about it is that now for every item in their shopping cart, we are calling our data source. So we made three additional data source calls to get these images. And so if they had a hundred things in their data in their uh, collection, this is a recipe for a performance disaster. Don't do this. Okay. I'm not going to get into the, how to do this better, but you know, this, this is why I prefer just to store all the stuff in the actual collection on the fly, which I could have grabbed the image link and then I wouldn't have had to do the data fetch. So I don't know. Think about that a little bit. All right. So now let's do a text input in here. And so I'm going to say, hey, I want you to default to this item dot quantity. So that's the number of uh, each one of those items they chose. Okay, I did one, two, three. That was not on purpose. Um, but what we wanted to be able to do was we wanted to be able to change the amount in there. Okay, so we're going to, we're going to change this right here. We're going to say, hey, I want you to show me the subtotal. And so you can see that those are all correct. Um, and so maybe we'll go up here and just do this and just show me the price. So we, right, I'm really just after trying to be able to visualize as much as possible. You can always, you know, dumb it down later, but this is giving me a way to see that I'm getting what I expect, right? So two of these is 36 is 72. Okay. So now you want to change quantity. So this is a little bit trickier. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to this field and we're going to say, hey, if they change this field, so there's a property called on change. When they change this field, I need to do a couple of different things. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to patch coal shopping cart. And what item? This item. And what do we want to do? We're going to set the um, quantity. Oh, we got to put the curly bracket right here first thing. We're going to say, hey, I want to set the quantity field to be um, self, which is the current controls text, but it's a number. So I have to wrap it in value. So that's going to take whatever they type in here and write that overwrite the, the row with the new value they put in there. But then we also have to calculate a new subtotal. And so we're going to say subtotal is now equal to value self dot text. So whatever number they type in there times this item dot not quantity, this item dot uh, product price. Close or curly and do something like that. Now it's mad at me. So why is it mad at me? Um, so we're going to hover. Ah, so it's saying, Hey, I wanted, Oh, can I put an and for Sam right there? See, there you go. There you go. I didn't say I knew this in the video. So you can see that a, I screw up B how I quickly figured out what I did wrong. So now if we're doing this right, if we go back over here and say, Hey, I only want to get one of those sweatshirts. If we do a one here, what should happen? Look at that. Everything updated 36 and one. If we go down here and be like, Hey, I want two of these. Awesome. So we're able to modify our order amount. And the real key here is that we're just using on change. There's like 17 different ways you could do this. But in this case, because I'm modifying a collection, and it's a small change like this. I just throw it on, on change right here and it works pretty well. Okay. So there you go. So that gets all of that. 
Then if you wanted, I guess we'll pull it in a little tighter. I would then jump back over here to our other screen. Oh, let's say keep shopping. I'm gonna steal this label again, right? Cause label's got all the data that we want. So we'll go back over here because we're gonna need that on this screen. So there is our, um, our label. And we should see that if we change our quantities, let's go back to two of these sweatshirts, all right? Everything's working. If we delete one, perfect. So our cart functionality is the way we want it. So then last but not least, man, cause we are definitely getting to be a long video. I apologize, but this is great stuff, I hope. Um, so then now what do we have over here? We want the ability to have like a name and a comments field. So I'm gonna steal the, no, I'm not. That's, that's too much cheating. All right, so we'll go over here, we'll have a label. We'll say label is name. And then we'll do a text input. And in this text input, we'll set it to default to nothing. We'll do another label. And we'll call this one comment. And then we're gonna set another text input here. And with this text input, right, we're gonna point this out, but I'm gonna make this one bigger. So I'm gonna make the box bigger and I'm gonna change its mode over here on the right to be multi-line. So then that way they can type in full comments. Okay. So now we've got all the different inputs. So then now we're going to need to save all this data off to our SharePoint list. And we're gonna have to do that kind of in two parts. So let's go over here and look and see what I did over here to A, remind me, <laughs> no, um, but to kind of talk through this, right? But so what we're we gonna do, we gotta update the orders, right? That's that parent list we talked about with all the primary data. So, and remember, we'll just go over here and look at the list, makes it easier. We're gonna write in there who's ordering it, what are their comments, and then their total. So that's what this one should look like. So order total, order comments, perfect. And then title is in there somewhere. I know there it is title. And then what we're going to do though, is I need the ID of the record we just created. So I'm going to store that in a variable called bar record ID. And we just do that by putting a little dot ID on the end of our patch, which will return the record that they just created. They're the ID of the record, right? Because then what we're going to do is we're going to take everything that is in shopping cart orders, and we're going to put that into, um, all the items, and we're gonna put that into a different SharePoint list, right? So let's do this in baby steps. So place order. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is we're going to say patch, and we're gonna patch share shopping cart orders. We're gonna use defaults. Oh, I misspelled defaults. Defaults shopping cart orders. So that'll create a new record in there. And then now we're back to that whole idea, right? So title equals, we want it to be whatever's in this field. So we're gonna expand this out. So that's text input two. So text input two dot text. So whatever they type in there, we'll put there. Comments, we're going to do the same type of thing, right? We're gonna say order comments is going to be uh, text input three dot text. Perfect. So that gets those two in there. And then last but not least, we've got to put in our order total. And so I already know how to get that, right? That is all of this craziness. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to steal this because I know that this shows the right thing, but I'm going to go back over here and be like, all right, order total. We're gonna paste this in, but it's not the right thing because it's trying to paste in a bunch of text and all we really want out of this is this last piece. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna wipe out everything that's here. Get rid of all of this. Perfect. Oh, and I gotta put a curly bracket right here. So then this is gonna say, um, so we're going to use the width again. We're going to calculate the subtotal. And so that was the subtotal of all the things in Cole Shopping Cart. So we're going to take that subtotal. We're going to add to it that subtotal plus 107. And then finally, we're going to add 499 to that. And so that would work, right? You'd probably say, Shane, you could do this math a different way. Yes, I see it, but we're not going to change it. We're just going to roll with that. So that, let's do a test, should place an order that says test now 
do it. So this should place an order for 9807. So we press the button. If we go over here and we do a refresh. Test now, 980693, right? So we'd have to trim off decimal points, but we're not worried about that. And then order comments, do it. All right, perfect. So that is getting our um, data, our, our, our first portion patched, right? That is saving the this. So then now I told you I need the ID of the record that we just created. So we're gonna go up here, we're gonna append to this set var record ID. And we're going to just take our patch and say, hey, give me the ID column from when you were done with that, like that. So then now when we do the patch, we're going to get a variable called var record ID that's going to have that output. Perfect. All right, so that was step one. So step two is I want to write all of the items out of this collection into um, SharePoint. So a lot of people don't realize it, but you can actually, if you have a, t whoa, I got all like choked up. All right, anyway, so a lot of people don't realize that what you can do is you can actually do collect and then your SharePoint list, and then you can pass it a collection directly. So call shopping cart items. And if all of the column names match up, in this case they do, then you're able to just write the data directly. So you don't have to do a for all or loop. We can just push it up there with a simple collect like this. What's interesting about this though, is we, we know that Cole Shopping Cart, so when I made my collection, I purposely made the column names all the same. That's how I got the matching, yeah. But what one of the things that didn't happen is that there is not, um, if we go back over here and look, remember we had a, oh, I lost it, sorry. Let me find it down here. So we also have this column called order ID, and so that's not in our collection. So what I'm gonna do over here is I'm going to, you, before I uh, use it, or I guess we're still on the fly here, we need to do a add columns. And we're going to add the column. Um, and so what's it called, right? We need to be exact, so order ID. So add the column, order ID. And what value are we gonna put in there? We're gonna put in var record ID. Like that and that. All right. So if everything is happy with me, which we'll find out if it is or not, um, that should push the data over there. So if we say place order, or we'll do test now to do it too, and we'll just change the amount here, right? Because all this should just work. So we'll place the order. So a few things should happen. If we go over here, nothing happened to that one. But if we go here, we should have test now to, there's our amount, that looks good. And if we go over to this list, if we look, oh, you know what? So over here, let's add the column, show hide columns. Let's look at the ID column. Show me the ID column. So test now two is seven. So if we go over here and look for all the ones that are tied to seven, look at that. Baby onesie, one of those, hoodie, um, or sorry, two baby onesies, two of these, right? Both of these are tied to order seven. Here, let's flip this upside down. There you go. So seven, that's kind of cool. So then at this point, now that it's all saved, what we probably want to do, not that one, is after we got done placing our order, oops, then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a couple more things here. So we'll probably, um, now that it's all done, we would reset text input to, we would reset text input three. We would want to clear all of our collections, right? So coal shopping cart, right? Because we, don't, we want that all to be blanked. So reset, reset. And then finally we would navigate wherever we wanted to send them. So in this case, we're gonna send them to screen one. So here we'll just do this would be, this technically will be order four. So we place this order, everything should go. And let us, now we're dropped back in here. We have an empty cart, so we're ready to shop again. Yay! Whew, okay. That is way longer than I wanted, but hopefully this helps you guys, right? We, we don't do enough of actually building like a whole app end to end. 
Also keep in mind that there's a lot of different fix up, clean up things you could do. You could make this nicer, make it much prettier, right? I mean, I did a decent job over here of making it prettier. Um, but so, you know, you can definitely start bolting in more of that. And because none of you are gonna build this exact app, I totally get that. But the, all of the ideas are here, all the concepts, all the pieces are here. So, and then maybe in a future video, what we'll do is we'll talk about maybe how to view these orders or even edit these orders after the fact. I don't know, I haven't thought much about further because clearly this video is already too long. So, um, yeah. If you have any questions, comments, leave them below. If you need help building this, remember you can go to www.powerapps911.com. We have everything from uh, mentoring services where we just help you fix or solve one little problem real quick, all the way to full scale project works. And of course we have the whole training side as well where you can take full training classes or you can even take, um, you know, download this app, a working version of this app straight from, um, you know, our, our curated library over there. So lots of fun stuff. Check out the Chewy merch. If there's ideas of Chewy merch you want to see added, tell me. It just requires me now. Now I got it all set up. It just requires me going in and kind of quickly designing up some stuff. So cool. All right. With that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem is big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.